When driving a old BMW, your brake efficiency might be affected by your rear brakes not working properly and this is due to the brake pads not being able to slide in their holders. This is something that I've identified on my vehicle and yesterday I managed to sort it out. Why is it happening? Your brake pads are getting stuck in the holder that should be allowing for that movement to happen and due to corrosion the inner brake pad is getting seized in the channels that should allow it to move. Now add that to brake pad servicing that hasn't used the correct chemicals and the correct attention to clean those surfaces and any older BMW will be experiencing this type of issue. Although I'm obsessive about my car and I'm obsessive about inspecting my vehicle, after three, close to four years of owning this vehicle, I barely noticed um, this issue happening. I was just considering that my brake discs are old and the brake pads aren't working as they should. But because I was really curious to see how the system works, I decided to take everything apart to see what's happening over there. And to my surprise, I found the following things. Now to sort out this issue that will affect seriously the way that your vehicle is performing, you will need the following main products and tools. The main thing is a diagnostic tool that will allow you to disengage your electronic parking brake. My tool of choice right now is this, the um, Xtool D7, quite easy to use. I also have the original BMW Ista, but this is far easier to use. After that, another thing that is really worth its money is a dedicated brake pad lubricant. Uh, these types of products, especially this one, is designed to withstand up to 1000 degrees so if you apply it on your brake system, it will be able to withstand that temperature and ensure that uh, your brake pads will be sliding correctly. We start with removing or we start with lifting the vehicle, disengaging the electronic parking brake using this type of tool. After that, we will need to make sure that the vehicle is safe. So we will place some jack stands in different strategic points. My points of choice and my favorite points are on the transmission member, I will show you where. And there is another holder for the rear subframe. Wheel is off, vehicle is secured. We proceed in undoing a 30 millimeter bolt uh, also using a 16 millimeter spanner to ensure that that slider doesn't move. We have two symmetrical bolts that need to be undone. Once this is done, we are able to push and pull the brake caliper. This, if the system is relatively healthy, will allow for us to push the piston enough to allow us movement of our brake caliper. Before actually taking it out, we need to undo the coupler for the electronic parking brake and also ensure that that wire, wire is not held to the caliper. So we will need to push it from its holder. Should we be working on the part that we have the brake pad sensor, Ideally, we also disconnect the brake pad sensor from its junction box, from the big box, all the way to our brake pad, allowing in the end for us to take out the brake pad and remove it once the brake pad is out of the vehicle. Vehicle is lifted. Um, the brake caliper has been, the two bolts have been undone. All the connectors have been disconnected. 
at this point in time, we should be able to twist our caliper and always start from the bottom bit. So we twist it and we slide it out. Providing that everything else is disconnected, we can push it to one of the sides. In my personal experience, I've always prepared something to hold it on its lower on its lower side. So it is held in place and um, the hydraulic cable is not tensioned. That thing is to one of the sides. Now we have access to our brake pads and now we can inspect them. Usually the front brake pad will be able to slide out easily while the interior one will be the one that is seized. Usually I take a tap and I start uh, knocking in different uh, um, points to allow that pad to to loosen up i don't exaggerate in one oh, i don't exaggerate in only one direction so i'll be pushing it out pushing it in and allow it to get loosened up eventually that brake pad will allow us to remove it completely and this is where you can inspect what is happening on the interior bit of your disc another trick or another thing that you can use to diagnose if you're in this type of situation is with the wheel providing that you have wheels with enough space you can put your finger in between the metal housing and the brake caliper and you can feel the interior of your brake disc it's very hard to just yet but in my opinion even if your brake disc is in good condition I would still advise you to do this process to ensure that your brake system will stay in, in good health for a longer time. So brake pads are out. If you see that you have a problem and if your brake system had this problem, the next step that you will need to do is to remove the brake caliper carrier. For that one, we have two big M18 bolts. It will be a bit tricky for you to get enough leverage because these bolts are tight enough to 110 newton meters and a little bit of rust will make it a little bit harder to remove. Those two bolts uh, need to be loosened up. Maybe you're gonna use some WD-40 penetrant spray if you actually need it. Once you remove those bolts, time to take out the carrier out. And here is where you will identify and clean all the surfaces. The metal retainers will be or show some care when you're removing those ones. Using adequate tools, you can pop them out, clean them, and after that, you will refit them. Should you have new ones, you don't need to care that much about this process. We continue with the massive metal part. That needs to be filed down and maybe using a wire brush you clean it. You ensure that those surfaces that are allowing your brake pads to slide are capable of allowing that movement to happen. And I would say before reassembling everything, put your brake pads in and ensure that the sliding is able to happen. It shouldn't be very easy to do, but it shouldn't be sticking at any point. You have uh, reworked the surfaces, you have cleaned the metal uh, parts, the, the clips, uh, the sliding mechanism. You have cleaned the edges of your brake pad. You are comfortable with the finish. Now I, I would apply, or I have applied very thin coating even on the brake caliper, the brake caliper holder put the metal clips on top of them, apply the very thin coating even there. We go to the vehicle, we install this part, we tighten up the two M18 bolts to 110 Newton meters. I've also added a little bit of copper grease on those two bolts, although in theory I shouldn't add anything else. I just wanted to make sure that later when I want, want to remove and put new brake discs, I'm able to undo them quite easily. So 110, 110 Newton meters for those ones. At this point, I've noticed that I managed to contaminate the brake disc with a little bit of the lubricant. Using the brake pad cleaner or the brake cleaner, I've sprayed it on the brake disc, cleaned the brake disc. 
and at this point in time we are ready to install the brake pads the brake pads on the side of them you apply again this lubricant um, to ensure that they are sliding properly and also you might apply the same lubricant where the piston is matching your brake pad everything goes in time to take your brake caliper you will slide it in align the holes put the bolts in the um, 30 millimeter bolts again these ones should be torqued to 35 newton meters it's a very uncomfortable position to use a torque wrench this is why personally i've done them hand tight now don't forget to connect all of the things that you have disconnected also ensure that you connect your brake pad sensor and i would say that providing that everything went according to your plan you are able to refit your wheel the same process on the other side once you have finished with this use the diagnostic tool to reactivate your electronic parking brake also uh, use your brake a few times to ensure that the cylinder gets close to your brake pads and your brake system is working properly and that being said you should have uh, rear brakes that are much much more effective or you should have rear brakes that will withstand the test of time will withstand corrosion for a quite a long time from now now i hope that this video helped and you learned something new if you want to work with me on different projects get in touch using our social media or our website here is where we are ending the video and hopefully we are going to see you in the next one